Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Okay, I guess get started then. I know yeah, I have the let's first few get slides. started. Kelly, why don't you introduce yourself, pass it off to Celinda. I'll go last and then we'll pass it back. Okay, well, thank you all for coming. I'm Kelly O'Keefe. I'm Area 141, with, I live in Dayton, Ohio. And i one of the three people that put this together, mainly Angela put the slides together. But um, so this is a joint effort with me, Celinda, Kelly, and Angela. And I will pass, I will, Celinda, introduce yourself next. Sure, I'm Celinda Youngheim. I'm in the Los Angeles area and uh, happy to be here. And thank you all for coming and I'll pass it to Angela. Thank you, Celinda. Angela Sullivan, Chicago headquarters for Recovery International. If you don't know me, I know a lot of people on this call. Um, I'm gonna be the one that you're gonna end up reaching out to for a lot of the materials if you uh, are interested in having them. So that's me. And with that, let's go ahead. Um, if you haven't already, please either introduce yourself in the chat box, or you could even rename yourself with your um, name, area number, or city, state, whatever works for you. All right, Kelly, why don't you go ahead? Okay, thanks, Angela. So these are just our basic guidelines. So if you have a question or comment, please allow, allow time for a response from the meeting leader. Uh, sometimes there's different points of view, so we can't all agree, but know that your, your comment is noted. And you can participate. Now we have a question part at the end, but if you have a question as we're going along or a comment, probably the easiest thing would be to raise your virtual hand. Okay, I guess the next one, please. Okay, so this is what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna cover the types of marketing materials that are available and how to obtain those. Angela's gonna talk about that. We're going to expand your knowledge of where to host resource tables. So Celinda will talk about where to have a resource table. And I will talk about what you can have it on your table. And also Angela's gonna talk about conferences, presenting at conferences. And then we're also gonna talk about a little bit about promoting recovery through social media, news and meetup.com. Okay, and now I'll turn it over to Angela, who's going to talk about available marketing materials. All right, so we have a lot of things available. Some of you know this, and we have some new things that you're probably not aware of. So these are brochures that have been around uh, for a little bit. There's, um, there's two different ones uh, for English, just a general kind of if you know someone struggling with any of, of these issues, uh, or the seven keys to better life. Those have been around a while. Power Your Mind brochure came out, obviously, a couple years ago when the workbook came out. Um, we are happy to announce that we have a second edition of Power Your Mind workbook loaded up into Amazon. And what's really nice about it is we've um, edited some of the content, some of the things that we needed to tweak in that and made it just a little bit less expensive, which is nice, too. So uh, $20 was, was a hefty price, so we're down about $6 from that. So that's good. So those are obviously available, and that Power Your Mind is the middle school, high school age group. But we also have some revised brochures in Spanish. You may not have seen these. So we have that um, same one that you were just seeing before, translated into Spanish in the Seven Keys uh, brochure, also translated. Um, and a new look and new design. So one of the things that we found is that all of our brochures really look similar. Um, and one of the things that was that was nice for Karen to look at to say, yeah, let's just make these look different because um, you know, you're pulling brochures and it certainly was um, a little confusing sometimes which one you're grabbing. So we have those available. But then we have new things. We have new postcards available. So um, about a year ago, we came out with a professional's brochure. Uh, Karen and one of our volunteers and I just did a conference 
um, what was it, Karen, two days ago? It feels like <laughs> it feels like a week ago already, but it was just a couple of days ago and it was the Chicago Social Workers Conference. So we brought those professional brochures there. Um, we know that recovery is a great adjunct to professional care. So those are important conferences for us to go to. We also have veterans uh, brochures. And then what you're seeing are these little postcard size pieces, which are really nice because they're blank on the back. And when we, um, you know, you're at a conference or something, it's really easy for people to just jot a note on the back of that uh, and use those. So we have more, we even have one for better mental health for everyone. Um, but one thing that people tell me is helpful, and if you're running an in-person meeting, you might want a card to give out to people. So these are little business card size on the right that you're seeing. Um, we made these for people who, you know, just it's a handout. Hey, there's a weekly meeting. It's Thursdays. It's at this address. Um, so we did those for Doug, Luthi, a couple other people. Um, Celinda does a lot, and Kelly both do a lot of um, booths, tables at, at various mental health, um, whether it's a, a conference or, or a suicide prevention walk or something like that. So having those cards are really helpful too. These are really inexpensive for us to do. And if you want to promote us in some way or promote your own meeting, please reach out to me. I'm happy to get you a stack of those cards. We also have, um, this was done a while ago and, and we might be ready for a, a redesign on it, but we've got you know tearaway flyers that you could just tack up on those bulletin boards that you find at restaurants or any kind of local store, libraries, community centers, wherever someone will let you tack that up. This one's kind of nice because it's, um, you know, grab a spot. And if you tack these up and just cut along the lines, people can just grab that. There's a second side of this that has our website on it. So if they grab one of those little spots, uh, you know, don't take yourself too seriously. On the back, they're going to have recoveryinternational.org so they know where it came from. And hopefully they'll, they'll look a little bit further. The QR code goes right to our website as well. So Linda, I, looks like has their hands. Okay, you know I just have a, a thing I do is when I put up one of those, I tear off one tab so it makes it look like <laughs> somebody's already taken one. Oh, it looks like somebody's interested. Maybe I'll take one too. So good. Yes, that's a good starter tactic. A, li sure. a little waste, but it's, it's well, <laughs> <laughs> whatever works though, right? Um We've had other people who have had in-person meetings say, wow, I really wish we had a sign out in front. Um, so what you're seeing on the left is, again, you know, just a yard sign that maybe it can't stay up all the time. But, um, you know, the day of the meeting or for the meeting so people can find that location, they're allowed to stake that in front of, you know, whatever venue um, they they have. Uh, people have asked for like display materials, so tabletop signs or even posters that are you know larger that they can tack up on the bulletin boards of the um, venues that they present uh, the meeting at. Any of those things are possible, okay? So we're happy to to design or redesign or make it fit what will work best for you. Um, you know, I'm just going to take a pause there and I'm also just going to stop sharing so I can see everyone just to see if there's any questions about any of what I presented, uh, how you might get that. I know I've got some folks in Canada. We can figure this out. You know, um, these are digital files. We use a company that could ship there or we could give you digital files and you can find your own printer to ship there as well. And Celinda, I see your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to say one, I think the yard sign is a great idea because people wander around looking for the meeting place. And when they see the sign, it's like, oh, I found it. But the other thing I wanted to say is Angela sent me just some eight, eight and a half by 11 sheets that I printed out and just put in like those staples uh, display holder things and set them on the table. So easy. And they don't get banged up and they look really great. So. Nice, thank you. Holly, go ahead. Um, so how much does this cost? Like if if somebody wanted to order 
those business cards or something. But how do we pay for that? We pay for that. How's that? Really? Our best answer ever, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> you're doing okay. us, yeah, you're doing us a huge favor by hosting these meetings. Obviously, you're collecting donations and meetings, right? So we're here to support you doing that in any way possible. And um, these are really low expense ways to, to help support you. Uh, I did have someone that, you know, had to like, I can't put a yard sign out, but no one can ever find the door that we meet in and you got to go downstairs. So I, I did simply a laminated um, eight and a half by 11 so they could just tape it up on the days they have meetings and people can find that door, but it's laminated. So, you know, it's, it has some durability to it. Very but simple. Angela, if it's on Zoom, right? And I just want to give business cards out to fellows that may, mm -hmm. that's okay too? Okay. That's okay too. Yeah. You can promote your Zoom meeting. A lot of the requests we get, obviously, are for the community meetings that are happening happening at a location. Um, but but Zoom is fine too. And Holly, if you are, you know, if you have the opportunity to um, do any of the tables that Kelly's going to talk about a little bit later, then yeah, we're going to supply you with even more than that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you know, some places have more opportunities than other. I, I'm in the Los Angeles area. We have a lot more opportunities. San Diego, if you live in a smaller town, there may not be as many opportunities. But there's a lot of ways to look around with a fresh eye and look for things. NAMI is almost everywhere, the National Alliance for Mental Illness. And they have a lot of events, and we can usually partner with them or you know, ask them if they're, if they have an event, if we can have a table there. And sometimes it costs something. So then you want to talk to Angela and see if we can consider the price. I know in Los Angeles, I can't remember what it was, but it was something like $900. And we said for a one day conference, that's just not worth it. But if it's a hundred dollars, it would be worth it. So um, take a look out of the darkness or any kind of suicide prevention program. They often will have a walk and they have some resource tables, wellness groups. Um, often churches will have a some kind of a resource fair or a mental health fair or um, around the holidays particularly or around some kind of particular event. Senior citizen fairs, um, local government. And um, just kind of look around. If you see a banner somewhere that says we're having a health fair, find see if you can find out more about it. Contact somebody and just say, are you having any resource tables? Are there any still available? We'd be interested in, in joining in. And then you just take your tablecloth. And I probably in some places people don't have a tablecloth. Again, you can talk to Angela about how, what we can do for you. And if you have your T-shirt, that's a great way to market our our uh, recovery program. So do that. And then some of those brochures and things. I keep the table very simple. And, and Kelly's going to talk about it. But Angela can help you get some materials to put on that table. So Lynn? So in Canada, we have, uh, as you know, a free uh, health care system. So we have some unique challenges um, and I've seen, like I've been in RI for 10 years, I found RI through Canadian Mental Health Association. Now all these associations and hospitals, whatever, they have their own programs and they're funded and they get funding from the government. So they are not really open to letting us in because it cuts into the money that they're getting, right? So I'm finding it harder and harder to try and to reach out to these organizations because you just get I, I don't know how to get around that. And we're not well known in Canada. So that's but just like a lot point. of places. We do need to build our name everywhere. So sometimes it's a very simple thing and, and just sometimes creative. I mean, if you can, if your church is the kind of thing that will put out any kind of resource information, we can always drop brochures into church literature racks or community center literature racks. Those are great places to, just keep those things stocked. And libraries should take them because we're a nonprofit and you can approach the library and don't ever just put them in the rack without asking. But you can go up to the librarian and say, we're a, a nonprofit organization promoting mental health. May we put some brochures in your rack? And sometimes they'll take them and say, we'll put them in for you. 
but thank you for bringing him by. So, Mark, see your hand. Yeah. Uh, regarding uh, putting in churches, I've approached uh, some pastors and reverends, and they're re very receptive because they have members of their congregation asking for pastoral counseling, psychological counseling, whatever or help. And they thought that it would be a good tool, RI would be a very good tool for their uh, parishioners to be yeah. aware of and to use. So I think if you, in your local communities, reach out to various religious figures mm -hmm. and make them aware, uh, also psychologists who are affiliated with, like in Montreal, the Douglas Hospital, I've given some brochures out there too. Not that they're going to be uh, knocking on your door, but, no, but at least they're aware of, of that. Right, and just tell them the recovery is an adjunct to professional care, so we're not taking over what they do, we're supplementing what they do. Lynn, is exactly. that hand? Well, one thing I was able to do is, um, you have to get approval, but I was able to put some uh, brochures at, a farm, at the pharmacy uh, where you fill your prescriptions. So yeah. I thought that would be a good way, so they would just, they're just sitting out, some people go to pick up or drop off their prescriptions, our, our brochure is right there. Right. That's an excellent place to do it. And if you go to see your doctor, any doctor, your your chiropractor, your general practitioner, anyone, take along a brochure, tell them what recovery did for you, because you look fine, but they don't know where you came from and what you may have suffered with. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so we'll go to the next one because it has a list of items on your table okay just to let you know i'm having some internet problems so it's freezing up for me a little bit so if that happens you know i'm sure angela or Celinda will carry on but anyway if you do get a table you've arranged you know with nami or you've arranged to have a table what do you put on your table so you can get a a tablecloth from headquarters. I just got that one from Karen. Karen Hall is with us, the CEO. Um, obviously, you can get the brochures that Angela was talking about by contacting Angela. If you have the workbooks, the Better Mental Health Empower Your Mind workbooks, you can put those out. Obviously, you're not gonna. You're just gonna put them out for display. Um, the Power Tool cards are very helpful. That's a good way to engage people. When they come to the table, um, so I put out the original books also just for display only so they know, because that's what may be a regular meeting is mental health and real training or manage your fears, manage your anger. But just for display, I if, and the newcomer packet. So if you're on the website and you go to the area for newcomers, they have all the, the basic materials like the four-step example outline, the the big five, you know, what, what to expect at a Recovery International meeting. So I just make a bunch of those to give away. Um, the, the handouts that have the QR codes, so those are available. Angela can give you those, or the, I think those are on the website. The business cards she was saying, the postcards, the t-shirt, and then I put out candy too. And then one thing I want to uh, to engage people, go ahead, Talinda. Well, that's right. I just wanted to mention that recently I find fewer and fewer people want to take a lot of stuff. They just want something with a QR code or they'll take a picture of one brochure that gives the website and that's all they want. They don't want to carry around a lot of stuff. Other places, somebody may want to come and take one of everything, so... Yep, we're in a new age for sure. People just want this. So the QR code is really helpful. I just want to ask a couple of questions. If you could if you could take the slideshow down for a second. If you are, I just want to get some thoughts from people on how you engage people if you've had tables. And also, I've given away power tool cards. I mean, I've just said, well, here, have a power, you know, does anything resonate with you? And I just give it to them and they, just one card and they get real excited about that. Anyone else have any comments on what you, anything different you have on the table or ways that you engage people at your table? 
Yeah, I just want to mention networking with the other people that have exhibits there is a great way to get future things. So you start talking and somebody's with suicide prevention and they say, oh, we're doing a walk next month. Could you come and have a table there? Sure, we'll be glad to. You know, somebody else has got Mental Health America and they'd be happy to do it. So you just begin to connect and get a contact person with those various and you're building your library of contacts all the time. Yes, absolutely. At the conference a couple of days ago, I connected with the people we were staring at right across the walkway and got a got invited to do a Power Your Mind session for their uh, high school students um, at kind of an alternative school. So yeah, that worked out well. Thanks, Angela. I guess we'll go back to the slideshow. Okay. So the next one, we are just, these, the next slide just has like, what different tables look like. So it looks like, you know, my table, I had the original books. Um, and then I had the you know, candy, the, the business cards, the different brochures, you know, the things with the QR codes on them. Um, some of the power tool cards. I see the Celinda's table. They have some of the stand-up ones. So it looks like the stand-up ones are nice. I put in um, some of the stories of hope. I mean, like Bob Day wrote a really good article about how he used both AA and recovery together. And that's, you know, somebody says, oh, I'm in 12 step or something. I'll say, oh, you might enjoy this article that the guy wrote that talks about how he used the two programs together. Or somebody says, oh, I have a schizophrenic son and you say, oh, this person, this is how they used recovery with their schizophrenia. So you can kind of connect in that way. Okay, so now we'll go to Angela for presenting at conferences. So we, oh, Dan, before I see Dan's hand. So before we go on, go ahead, Dan. I just wanted to ask, do these packages, do they have particular names for the packages that you can send out that would have all the information that you could create your own table and have that available to uh, like at a, at a conference. Dan, it would be best to tell me what yeah, conference, everybody. what the audience is, so we I can actually give sure you um, the appropriate pieces for your conference. So I don't have just a package that I would send to people. I would really customize that for the audience. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Sure, sure. So we do look for opportunities to prevent at professional conferences, mental health conferences, just for community members, whatever it might be. Um, there are people who have sent me those opportunities and some of them are a really good fit and we apply and we've been pretty successful the last few years about getting accepted into um, an actual presentation uh, versus having a table. And sometimes that table can be just as valuable and, and, and more valuable really than just doing um, a single conference session. So uh, we have a mix of things that we've been doing. If you see something that you think would be a good fit for us, please send that information to me. Um, I will work to develop the proposal that would go in. We'd figure out who could present. Uh, if it's certainly out of the state of Illinois, that has some consideration because we have some travel expenses that we'd have to um, either uh, either put forward or reimburse if there's people locally, you know, if you're a leader in that area and you'd want to do that conference. So there are some considerations to that. But the first thing really is, you know, keep your eyes and ears open. And if you find those opportunities, please send them our way. So this year we have um, we just did that professional social workers conference. We have an Illinois counseling association. So another professional, like professionals, uh, conference. We, um, are doing the national federation of families, which is really open to just about any audience, including the, the people who are seeking help themselves. And we're doing, um, power your mind there because it's largely a, uh, young adult audience. So, you know, it, it could be a big mix. And certainly we have done 
um, you know, the basics of recovery. And I know many of you have done some of those sessions too. So please, you know, look out for those. There's my contact information. It's pretty simple. Angela at recoveryinternational.org. Um, and, and just make me aware of what's going on. We can't apply to everyone. Um, you know, funds are limited, time is limited, but we really do our best to uh, to pick and choose to figure out what we have the best chance at. So Linda, go ahead. Just going to say that sometimes Angela makes it so easy. I get an email saying, you know, a conference about something, you know, parenting or whatever. And I forward it to Angela and say, I don't know if this is a good fit or not. She takes a look at and says, yay or nay, or, you know, let's put in a proposal and see what happens. So she makes it very easy for us. So if you do some of the work, I do more of the work. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to turn this over. This is kind of, you know, a, a group effort at this point, talking about networking. Um, so, Celinda or Kelly, either one of you want to start us off? Sure. I can talk about just the kind of networking. Sometimes you're looking for a group, I mean, a, a meeting place, or sometimes you're just kind of looking for a good audience. But don't just stick to ideas of mental health and, and invite your group to join you. Maybe somebody from your group belongs to a church that would be willing to have either a meeting or would like to have a presentation and you can go and talk to them or talk to some, you know, they'll do a special program or something. Sometimes your, uh, your son's school is interested in having a mental health uh, program and you can talk to them about um, having power of your mind. So, you know, think about all your different affiliations and where somebody might be willing and what it is you're looking for. A place to do a presentation, a place to have a resource table, a place to have a meeting. Kelly, you got any other things you want to add? Um, well, with the church um, part of it, it's not so much anymore because we only have one meeting in our area now that meets face to face. But before COVID, when we were meeting at a church, the church really helped us because they had us in their newsletter. They had us in their bulletin. Right. So... <laughs> You know, even if you don't have a meeting there, you might be able to get in their bulletin or their, um, you know, however, whatever they have to their con congregants, you can maybe advertise there. Yeah, Lisa in San Diego has has a, an agreement with a temple. I think they give her half a page in their little news bulletin every month. And she writes up some little thing and puts it in there, a different thing every time. I see Holly's hand. Let's see what Holly wants. Holly again. Um, yeah, I just question is um, these churches, the meetings that I've gone to in churches, we pay rent, right? So Linda, so how do you handle that? Sometimes, yeah, I've, more and more places aren't wanting to do it for free because they have expenses too. But there are still places that are willing to do it for nothing. And, um, and besides churches, you can look at some of the, like, we have Kaiser Health and they often have a psychiatric department and they would be happy to have a recovery meeting. Plus they offer a security guard in case it's needed. And um, any kind of community center, there's a lot of places. Libraries tend to not want an ongoing meeting every week, but some of them might. It depends how much you know requirement they have for, for people. But is it unheard of that meetings never ever pay rent for a room? I'm I don't no, know. we we do if we need to, but when you have a you know four people attending a meeting and they want ten dollars a meeting, even that's forty dollars a month, and that's quite a bit. So we have again we have to weigh that, but recovery can certainly discuss it with you know we want to discuss it, and our area has some funds. So, Holly, just unmute. Yes, so um, hospitals are also a good place to try and have a meeting. Right, thank you, Judy. Oh, I was just gonna mention that in San Diego, I know you were talking quite a bit about Lisa and her synagogue and we've also done some presentations, um, you know, four to six week presentations at a couple of, uh, more than a couple uh, Catholic churches in San Diego County. And I don't know they if this is something that is uh, the Catholic 
dioceses and other counties do, but in San Diego, they have mental health. Um, I don't know what they call it, but they'll have like a team that helps helps uh, the congregants with their mental health by having resources available and posting resources in the bulletin and having materials out. And we were lucky enough to um, get involved with a couple of uh, churches in our area where they had us come in and do this presentation four to six weeks. And it was such a great experience. And, you know, of course, you know, it takes a lot of time and commitment out of um, because we're all volunteers, but we do have some materials for that. If you would like, uh, if anybody's interested, we can get them to Angela that we used. Um, we had a workbook that we, that Lisa put together with her staff and it, it went quite well. And, you know, people would purchase the literature and and um, take of our, our meeting flyers. And, you know, so it was a little bit of revenue generating too. So that was kind of nice. Good, thank you. And I wanted to mention another source. A lot, most states now have what they call a peer certification training where an agency will do a, sometimes it's a six weeks, sometimes it's 12 weeks. Some are more elaborate than other, but they will do a training and if you ask them, they will often have recovery come and do a presentation for that group. And so that's another opportunity. Uh, Share in Los Angeles has, they not only host a lot of our Zoom, or all of our Los Angeles Zoom meetings, but they have a peer certification training and they require all their, their attendees, which can be like 75 people in a training, uh, to attend three, three self-help meetings a week, one of which must be recovery. So they bring in a lot of people that come in trying to find out about recovery. So that's another source. Any other questions before we go on? Let's go back to the slides. So we've already covered a few of these things, but you know, you can tell your doctor, your, your dentist, your mental health professional, any faith organizations, um, other kinds of networking events. May is Mental Health Month, at least here in, in the United States, and there's lots of events that happen in May. So you can be going to a conference every weekend. Um, and um, yeah, depending how much time you have, if you want to go a little further, you can join a community board. Um, and then that you have an opportunity. I go to a number of networking meetings monthly in my Los Angeles area that we just go get on by Zoom now. But I always introduce and talk something about recovery when I'm doing introductions. So it's not much, but everybody in the mental health community knows what I who I'm affiliated with. Um, and you know, although 12-step meetings pay for their their means, if you're looking for a location, sometimes they have a meeting place where they would also uh, think about give, donating a free meeting place to us. So, um, And then we're going to have Kelly talk about some of the social media things. And for some HOA, homeowner associations, you have a community room, which is not like meeting in your home. So you could use your community room if your HOA would be willing to do that. So, And... Um, most cities have a disability center and they're very open to, because their disability is mental health as well as uh, physical. And they are very willing to have as one of our, our one of our in-person meetings is at a disability center, uh, self-help centers and mental health agencies. So um, wellness centers, community centers, senior centers, behavioral health clinics such as Kaiser, NAMI, we mentioned. Colleges and universities are an interesting place because a lot of them have a counseling center and, and I've gone in regularly to make presentations to either a special class or, or the, they'll, like Judy mentioned, you can do a six or eight week kind of intro to recovery. So lots of good things there. Fire and police stations, libraries, YMCAs and senior centers. So 
lots of places to think about just being kind of creative and places to put things like those flyers or any place that's got a community bulletin board. You can walk into the into the laundromat and hang up one and hang up one, you know, anywhere in the market. Sometimes they have one depending on where you live. So next. So if you're on social media, um, this doesn't have to be complicated. If you just look at Facebook every once in a while and you're seeing our um, ads come up or you see, you know, we'll put a spot or something up like that. All you have to really do is click the share button down in that corner. So it's not like we're asking you to make your own post, although you can, but just clicking the share button will um, allow you to, I'm going to circle that really quick, just so you guys are seeing. So on right there on that lower right hand corner, that's just share. I mean, it's that easy and then it posts from you. So it could be as simple as that. Um, Instagram is the same way and, um, Twitter, which is now threads and I don't tweet and, uh, not quite sure the status of that. We don't currently have any recovery, uh, posts on Twitter, but we do on LinkedIn. So from a professional network standpoint, and then every once in a while, you know, I'll send a video that's a recorded special session or something that, um, that we're posting, from YouTube, and you can also like that and you know share that. So the likes and the shares are really easy way to um, help with the social media part of it. If you do want to share your own story, there's a couple of ways to do that. Right on our website, we have the opportunity. I'd love a video. I can post the video to our website. We have this testimonials page, so you can write a testimonial and, and rank us with, you know, five stars, of course. Um, but you could also write something about yourself, you know, in three words, how was I before RI and how am I after, right? Or or what, what has RI done for me, right? So you could do your own personal post. Karen, go ahead. I just want to clarify um, what you're seeing on the screen is the Recovery International General Facebook page that's for the public. So if it's the private Facebook group, then you cannot share those. So the, the public RI page where we have these kinds of posts, we'd love for those to be shared. That's fantastic. And thank you, Karen, for clarifying, because yes, that was an important piece about the, the Facebook meeting page versus the regular. Um, great, I'm gonna, oh, in public relations, write a letter to the editor of your local paper. Uh, how, how has RI helped you? Reading online mental health articles, lots of them out there. You could actually comment in the section that, um, that they accept for comments. And you can say, hey, did you ever hear about Recovery International for improving your mental health? Uh, this is a self-help program, right? So you can actually do a little um, PR as well if you're going through those. All right, Kelly, I know we're down to our last five minutes or so. I'm gonna give you the meetup section. Okay, since we're running out of time, I'm just gonna briefly say what meetup is. and also share just to show you what our page looks like but then we, what we won't have too much time so anyway meetup.com is a site where people can go to go to events so you join a meetup group if it's in an area that you're interested in so hiking crafts meditation mental health so we do have one for recovery international it depends on the area we don't have a nationwide meetup but we have each area can create their own if they would like to. So we we have like for the Dayton area, we have Recovery International for Dayton area, Ohio, it's Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, and Columbus. So the organizer, it's free for someone to sign on to meet up and find a group that they're interested in, join that group and go to their event. That's free for individuals, but whoever is hosting, they do have to pay. And right now it's about, I think $99 every six months. Now this was a, and for that price you get three pages. So like for my area, I was able to have separate pages for Dayton, like I said, Columbus, and then Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky. And, but you can get reimbursed. Now I will say that 
um, prior to the COVID time, that's how we got all our newcomers to our meetings was on Meetup. Anyway, this is just an example of one of the pages. The other pages I have are like the Dayton and Columbus. So I'll go back to the Cincinnati one. So these are people that have joined. Obviously, we have over 300 people, but, you know, not too many people go to the meetings. But, you know, there's a little description. We have a little, um, you know, we Scott Bushbaum in our area adds a lot of things to it. But anyway, we have our meetings listed. So even though it's a phone meeting, we have like the phone meeting here. Uh, Monday, you know, tomorrow we have one. We have a phone meeting and then we have. Uh, you know, an evening phone meeting. And then this is our meeting that is, you know, is also is at a library and then they also have the phone option. So this is just an example. Um, and, you know, we have, and so with, you know, if you create it, you can, when you're an organizer, you create events. So you add your meetings to this. And then it's nice if you do have a Recovery International meeting, even though most people attend meetings outside of Meetup, if, if you want to promote, you want to RSVP through Meetup just to say you're going, because otherwise, it, sometimes it looks like only one person attends the meeting, and that's not the case. <laughs> so if you you know if you have a Meetup.com in your area, it's nice to RSVP. So then somebody from the outside will see that there's people attending. Um, so maybe I'll stop sharing there and we get, does anybody have any questions about that? Does anybody, I think some people uh, um, meet up, meetup.com pages, I think in Southern California area. So Linda? Yeah, just a, anyone in your group that may have um, some time is a good person. It doesn't need to be the group leader. It could be somebody who has time to post a little interesting something rather every day. And um, <clears throat> so take advantage of, of somebody who might have a little extra time and want to be of service. 